Okay, let's try this again. Hi there, you guys. Uh, welcome to this hour of English classes here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa, and I'm one of the many teachers that we have here on Verbling.com that teach English classes. If you have a reservation for this class, you can go ahead and use it right now by clicking on the button up above the video. Um, if you do not have a reservation, it did say that it was fully booked, but sometimes people don't uh, show up to use their reservations. So you can stick around a little bit to see, and pretty soon the Join Class button will be working for you. And if you are a member of Verbling.com, then you can join the class at any time. Um, in this hour, we're going to be doing a reading class. So if you want to uh, practice your reading out loud, maybe learn some new vocabulary words. I was just reviewing the article and there are lots of very informal uh, terms. So um, good to be aware of those terms. Even if you don't use them in your way of speaking yet, it's good to understand them so that when you read an article or if you listen to a podcast or something like that or a TV show, you'll at least know what they're saying. So. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Rafael. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Good. How's the rain? Rain? Did it stop raining? or Yeah, I've heard that Brazil's been having a lot of rain. Um, I think like it's more in Sao Paulo. More in Sao Paulo, not here in Rio. Oh, okay. Not in Rio? Unfortunately, because we are need, we're in the need of uh, Rain here. Oh, but you had the lightning. That was what you had, the lightning that uh, yes. knocked off stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nihon, how are you doing? You still awake? Mm-hmm. Yes. Hi. <laughs> okay. Good. Do you need some coffee or anything? Get ready? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have a coffee. You do? Okay. You're all set. You're yes. good. Good to go then. All right. And Muhanad, how are you? I am fine. Am I saying your name right? Yes, yes, Muhanad. Muhanad, okay, welcome. And you're from Cairo? Yes, Cairo. Nice, welcome, welcome. And Graciela, how are you today? I'm good, and you? Good. I'm doing well. Thank I miss you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was just thinking about you earlier because I saw some of the posts that you put on Facebook and I thought, wow, where's she been? <laughs> <laughs> I see it was message for me when yeah. you have class. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Nihon, what did you do in the last class? Oh, it was embarrassing. I addressed someone, uh, not Rafael, Raquel or something, with Q. Uh -huh. it, it was a different student. And I just start to chat with him or her, I don't know, and oh. say, uh, uh, I will go to gym next week and you inspire me something. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you tell them it's, it was 1 o'clock in the morning for you, so they yes, can yes. Give, you, uh, give you a break? <laughs> at, the, at the end of the chat, yes, we understood each other, oh, and I, I said, I'm starving, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nutrition is really important. <laughs> what are you doing? I think she, she was a uh, female, I don't know, but Raquel, Raquel or something. Yeah. Raquel, maybe. yeah, from Spain, <laughs> maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, what your diet? You're not supposed to starve yourself on the diet. So, are you eating, or why are you I'm so? I'm eating hungry? everything, uh, but bread. Everything and except bread. Okay. Yes, and I, I don't. I don't feel that I I I have feed it enough. Okay. While I, I while I cannot eat bread, you mm -hmm. know, Turkish culture is a lot of bread. Hmm. Okay, so you you cut out the bread for now. Yes. Is that working? Yes, I have lost three, uh, three clothes. 
Three kilos oh. already? Already, yes. How long? I have two more. How many days? You know, uh, okay, you. Uh, uh, a week uh, maybe, because when you just start to, to make a diet, uh, you lose quickly. It's a kind of um, water in, inside water, your body. Water, yeah, water, yeah. yeah. Then it starts, this real diet starts uh, in that point. Mm-hmm, okay. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> what happens when you want to eat bread again? Uh, I think I I will not eat a lot of bread again because Just my age, little. yeah, mm -hmm. my age is obvious, and it's not really healthy to eat a lot of bread. And mm -hmm. and the Eastern countries culture uh, eat a lot of bread, but I'm not y uh, young uh, enough to eat that much bread. Mm. So when you're young and very active, it's okay, but later you have to get yes. back. Okay. Yes. I see. Yes. And wow. thank you, Raphael, <laughs> for inspiring <laughs> us. <laughs> I think I'm doing my job. I'm happy. I, I was trying to run the other day, and it was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to run. Now I can go one, one lap around the track uh, without stopping in less than three minutes and then I'm tired and I have to walk again <laughs> but so. you keep you keep practicing and it it, it will um, be uh, well because in the first weeks you feel really tired when you just start uh, exercising yeah but uh, it is getting easier I guess is that at your at least I hope yeah yeah Raphael <laughs> is that what happened for you ah. I yes, at, at the beginning it was it was exactly in this like this, but nowadays I'm I think I'm getting more. Uh, it, it's becoming easy to to practice. I mm -hmm. think it's uh, since I'm better my training and I'm increasing the the charge the load of training. Mm -hmm. So so it became it's. Coming, it's not more. It's no longer. Uh, how painful? can I say? Painful, <laughs> painful. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because um, I used to be very uh, in shape before I had children and stuff, and when I was younger, and I did a lot more sports and running and soccer and different types of. Uh, activities and now after having three children and being mm -hmm. and being 43 it just it's not as easy as it I used to think like I keep thinking oh I'll just be able to run around the track no big deal but it's not easy <laughs> no. Grac Graciela she likes to do what is it the Stairmaster yeah okay. <laughs> Stair master. <laughs> I love I love Stair master. I think next week uh, I I change. <laughs> oh, you're going to change my schedule? Yeah, because mm. uh, two hours of Stair master next week. Next week I went to one hour of Stair master and one hour of abs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. Mukhanad, we're just. Uh, talking about some exercise before we get started just because we know each other about this. Do you uh, get much exercise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a very heavy exercise. I um, go for a walk mm -hmm. every day. Nice. For uh, 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, but I try not, to not, walk. Uh, not running or going to the gym? No, no, I, I don't have time for me. <laughs> well, you have your business suit on. Because I'm study, a student, I'm oh, studying. Oh, you're a student, okay. Are you working also or studying? No, no, studying only. Okay. What are you studying? studying uh, I'm studying medicine in Kai University. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, well, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Studying medicine yes. is is hard work. Yes. There's a lot of things to know about the body, human body, and 
everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, guys, well, um, let me just say to anybody who might be coming across this, um, there were a lot of reservations, but like I said, people sometimes can't make it after all. Um, if you want to join the class, we're going to start now, and you can uh, join us and read along and um, learn some of these new phrases that are used in this um, crazy article about this crazy movie. So has anybody else seen this movie? I know that Nihon has seen it, and I've seen it. Um, did, did you guys see it, Graciela, Rafael, or Mukhanad? The movie American Hustle? No, no. No? No, no. I think it, uh, this Sunday. Oh, you're going to go see it? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, I just saw it. I, I watched the trailer. The trailer very good. This movie looks very, very good. It's funny. This it's... actory. Uh-huh. This I is... love jo her job. Yeah, which one? Jennifer uh, Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, okay. Yeah, she, that's her on the on the far right over here. So just so you guys yes. know a little bit, um, the the article is going to tell you a little bit about the movie. But as you can see in this picture, it's from the the 1970s is the time period of the United States. So it was kind of funny to watch all of the the scenes having the different types of clothing and cars and the the style of um, decoration in the houses that's very 70s style which is is funny I don't know if it was the same in in your country but it certainly represented that um, time period of um, the United States which was kind of funny and of course these guys uh, who are back east like in New Jersey area near uh, New York the type of clothing that they wore and and that kind of thing uh, was kind of fun uh, to watch. So it was lots. It was a time period piece, not not very long time ago, but in the 70s in the United States. So I'm just showing you some pictures. What was a big deal was this guy Christian Bale apparently uh, gained a lot of weight. What did you say, Nihon? Like 50 pounds or something like that? 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Yeah. So yeah, nearly 20 kilos 20 maybe. kilos yeah so that was yeah. kind of a big thing that he he did uh, to play this part he's the main actor um, in the movie so and he lo lose all of his baits no oh he lost it all yeah okay how did he do that <laughs> did he stop eating bread <laughs> I don't know <laughs> yeah I wonder I wish I know yeah, we need to. The secrets of the Hollywood uh, movie stars that have to uh, gain and lose weight. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, these are some pictures. It's a interesting, funny movie. And like Nihon said, it's been um, nominated for 10 Oscars. So that's the, the most famous, probably, awards show for the entertainment industry or for the film industry is the, the Oscars. And that's coming up uh, next month. So... All right, well, let's get into it. American Hustle Movie Review by Darren Bevan. The um, link to the website, it's from New Zealand, actually. <laughs> so I, there's lots of them on the, on the Internet, obviously. So I chose this one because of the way that he was writing about it. There are lots of good uh, vocabulary words. So the cast, uh, the cast is, just means the people who were the main actors. So it was Christian Bell, Amy Adams, Bradley Cooper, Jennifer Lawrence, and Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner plays the mayor of New Jersey. Um, or a town in New Jersey or something. Atlantic City, maybe. Director is David O. Russell. All right, so here comes the Oscar favorite, already laden with awards via the Golden Globes, the SAG, which stands for Screen Actors Guild, awards, and blessed with Oscar nominations. It clearly is the one to beat. Okay, Graciela, why don't you start us off today? Mm-hmm. Uh, so there comes the Oscar favorites. Uh, uh, already Lane mm -hmm. with the ours being the gold gloves. They 
SAG Screen Actors Guild Earth, Earth and Blessed with the Oscar nominated mm -hmm. it clearly clearly in their one to be. Mm -hmm. So it they yes, stop um, there. We'll just do one at a time. Okay. Because lots of things okay. to talk about. Yeah. Oscar favorite. So to be a favorite means you're likely to win. So it's likely that this movie and the actors will win because they already have won some of the other awards. And that's what it says. Already laden with. To be laden with something means you already have it. You own it already. So they already received some awards. Um, and they have been blessed with. So to be blessed with means you have good fortune. You are lucky. Um, something good has happened to you. So they're blessed with Oscar nominations. A nomination is you are a nominee. So you get selected to be one of the people who might win an award. So that's what the nomination is. So there's uh, usually five nominees and then one uh, is the winner, of course. And so it is clearly the one to beat. So it's clearly the movie that, you know, people are, uh, they have to beat. There aren't any really other movies there that are pretty close to them. They've been pretty much winning almost all of them. So if you're, if you're lucky, you might beat them on one of the categories. Director David O. Russell reteams with his actors from The Fighter, Bale and Adams, and his Silver Linings Playbook team. Cooper and Lawrence to tell a story, some of which actually happened according to an on screen caption at the start. Okay, Mukhanad. Uh, I read? Yes. Should I? Uh, Just uh, read the same um, one that I read, Chris, right there. Director okay, David okay. O'Reilly. Yeah. Director David O. Russell reteams with his actors from The Fighter, Pale and Adams, and his Silver Linings playbook team, Cooper and Lawrence, to tell a story, some of which actually happened according to an on screen caption at the start. Mm -hmm. okay. At the start. At the start, right. So he reteams. That means he works with them again. So to to team up with somebody means you get together with them to make a, a team to work together. So he already has worked with all four of the main actors. So he has one movie called The Fighter, and these two people worked in that one. And this other movie, Silver Linings Playbook, um, used the other two actors. And so he's familiar with them. So he's re-teaming, working together again is what that means. Working um, again with some other people he has previously worked with. And when, you, when the movie starts out, um, this is what it says on the screen. So it's called a caption just because it's on the screen. It says some of this actually happened. So that basically tells us that maybe it was based on some true events, but... Mostly it's a fiction. It's a made-up story. So it's obvious um, that it was to tell a story, um, not to document real-life occurrences or, um, you know, not like a real-life documentary that was trying to be very accurate or exact. Um, let's see. I heard somebody come in. Hi, Moore. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank okay. Welcome. Mm -hmm. And... If you haven't uh, got the link yet, I'll put it there again in the verb link chat. And we're just reading here, so I'm going to read now. It's Thank you. Yeah, sure. It's 1978 America, and Bale is Irving Rosenfeld, a pot-bellied con artist with a garish comb-over, an affinity for Duke Ellington, and an ability to get anything out of any situation. Teaming up with Amy Adams' Sidney Prosser, who's desperate to get out of her current life situation, the pair start a series of loan scams. Okay, Nihan? 
It's 1978, America, and Bale is Irving Rosenfield, a pot-bellied con artist with a garish comp over and affinity for Duke Ellington and an ability to get anything out of any situation. Teaming up with Amy Adams, Sidney Proster, who's desperate to get out of he, her cur current life situation, the pair start a series of loan scams. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of, in this paragraph, just setting the scene for us. So like I said, it's in the 70s. Uh, Christian Bale is the actor, but his character is named Irvin, Irving Rosenfeld. And he's described as a pot-bellied con artist. So pot-bellied is that picture mm -hmm. that we just saw. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. when you have a big, fat belly like that. And usually um, we think of, like, uh, we use the word pot-bellied to describe a pig's belly. So a pot-bellied pig is like a big round um, stomach, you know, like a big belly. And he yeah. is <laughs> he's a con artist. So a con artist is a person who tells lies, basically, and tries to trick people um, to do different things. In this case, it's uh, they were trying to trick people uh, around loans, giving them money to get uh, loans and they were tricking them because they were taking people's money and then um, you know not really being able to get them the loans that's called a scam when you do that like you knowingly do it it's not like you made a mistake or something like that that's what they were doing they were con artists and he has a garish comb over so um, the comb over is how he does his uh, hair so in the first scene, we see how he takes time to put on his hair. You can't really see it too well, but this comb over means he has his hair on one side and then he combs it over to the other side to cover up a bald spot. So that, and sometimes in the movie, it kind of gets messed up. So it's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Nihon? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the beginning of the movie uh, actually starting with his combing his hairs, yeah. fixing yeah, it. Yeah, for, <laughs> yeah, for ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's, like it's a really lot. obsessive. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely something he has to uh, do <laughs> fix. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're describing him. So these uh, words garish just means like it's very kind of over the top and it just looks not very nice really. <laughs> And he has an affinity for uh, Duke Ellington, who is a, a famous American jazz uh, musician. And affinity for something means you like it. So it's part of his character that he um, hooks up with the, this Sidney Prosser character, which is played by a Amy Adams. They both like this uh, jazz musician. So they both have an affinity for or a liking, a liking of. So he hooks up with uh, the Amy Adams character, whose name is Sydney, and she her her story is that she's desperate to get out of her current life. So she also had kind of like a, I think she was like a strip dancer or something like that. And to be desperate to get out of something means you really want to make a change. She doesn't want to live that life anymore. So she she's very motivated. So they start working together, um, trying to scam. People. So the verb is to scam, which means to trick people, to get their money from them. But when they're busted by Bradley Cooper's curly-haired, overly eager FBI agent, Richie DeMasso, they're offered a way out if they can line up four further arrests. With no other option, Irving and Sidney, posing as a member of the English aristocracy, set out about their latest scam but end up trying to bring down the mayor of New Jersey, played with big hair by Jeremy Renner, thanks to Demacio's over-enthusiasm. Okay, Rafael. Hi, Carlos. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> but when they when they busted by Bradley Cooper's curly-haired, overly eager Oops, Mukhanad, you muted Raphael. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was reading. Okay, go ahead. Uh, by Bradley Cooper's curly-haired, overly eager FBI agent, Richie DiMasso, they're offered a way out. If they can line up for, for, for further arrests, 
with no other option, Irving and Sidney, posing as a member of the English aristocracy, set out upon their latest scam, but end up trying to bring down the mayor of New Jersey, played with big hair by Jerry Renner, thanks to the masses over enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Good. So they they got busted. So to get busted or to be busted means you get caught. So um, this agent, so let's see, this is, the agent right here is on the, the left, right, this guy with the beard. He's the FBI agent. So he actually catches them doing their thing. And, of course, he could have taken them to jail, but he offered them a way out. So a way to not have to get, go to jail. So that's a way out of trouble or out of jail. So if they could line up. So line up means to get, um, to get basically. If you're going to line up something, you're going to set it up. You're going to make plans for it. So what they were supposed to do is get four additional or further arrests of other people. And so they agreed to doing that. And um, Sydney's character, a Amy Adams, she was actually faking or posing as, so she had this British accent, and she was Lady Edith or something. And she was, um, that's what it means to be, to pose as, is to trick people, to make people believe that you are a different person. And so she was playing this character. And so they set about their latest scam. To set about means to start. So they started up a new scam in order to try to um, help the FBI guy catch more people, four more people, because he said he made a deal with them. If you catch more, four more people, we'll let you go. So they agreed, and so they started to do it. But in the end, they were tr they ended up, which means like as a result, they were trying to uh, bring down, mean which means like catch the mayor of New Jersey. So uh, that was more than they thought. So the mayor of New Jersey is like a big political figure, and it became very um, uh, complicated. The story got more and more complicated as it got more and more hard, harder to follow who's, who's doing what and what, the, what are they trying to do. So it gets a little complicated. Soon, all of the players are in deeper than they expected, and not everyone is who they seem to be. American Hustle is a good film with more comedy than perhaps you'd be expecting. Its over-the-top nature is evident in many places, and tonally, occasionally, that can wrong-foot the audience. Okay, more. you want to read this part here? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, from soon? Yes, exactly. Okay. So soon, all of the players are in deeper than, than they expected, and not everyone is who they seem to be. American Hustle is a good film with more comedy than perhaps you'd be expecting. It's over-the-top nature is evident in many places, and tonally, occasionally, that can run good the audience. Mm-hmm. Good. So, like I said, it got, kind of got complicated because, of course, they're trying to con people, so to trick people. So there's a lot of lies going on, and it can be hard to follow who's lying to who and who's telling the truth and that kind of thing. So soon all of the players, so um, these guys kind of team up. The FBI agent starts working with uh, Amy Adams, who's uh, Sydney, and also uh, the Irving character and they're trying to catch these other con artists and criminals and stuff. But they get in deeper than they expected. So if you're in deeper than you expected, it means that um, you, you're, you're, you didn't want to make it so difficult, but now you're really in it. So you, you might get nervous, you might get scared. It's like it's over the top. It's more than what you wanted to happen. So it kind of like the story gets more and more involved and more people get involved, like the mafia and stuff like that. So it's, it gets more tense for the people. Um, it's over-the-top nature is evident. That means, like, uh, when you do something over-the-top, it means you exaggerate it. So um, the characters, they kind of did 
um, they exaggerated maybe like the hair, the clothing, the way they spoke with the accents. Everything was more than what was would be real in real life. So we call that over the top. And that was evident. It means it was noticeable. So you kind of knew they were um, overdoing it, playing it up, we call it. And that means the tone of the movie, so how it feels and stuff. Um, but what happened with of, with this, as he says, is it it can wrong foot the audience. So that um, that's not something we would say in America, but in this is from New Zealand. So to wrong foot means to make you confused. So it would you know make you put you on the wrong foot because you are confused about something. So sometimes in the movie you don't really know what is going on, who to believe, what's next, what's going to happen next, that kind of thing. Lavished with Oscar nods for acting, it's fair to say that really Christian Bale and Amy Adams only deserve the nods, with their time on screen blowing everyone away. From the start, Bale convinces as the film opens with a slow, long scene with his distended belly proving to be the focal point before he exerts massive effort to create the perfect comb over. <laughs> okay, Carlos. Uh, your microphone's on, Carlos. Okay. So I have to read the paragraph? Yes, starting okay. with lavished with Oscar. Okay, lavished with Oscar, not for acting. It is fair to say that really Christian Bale and Amy Adams only deserve the knot with their time on a screen blowing everyone away. From the start, Bale convinces as the film opens with a slow, long scene with his distended belly proving to be the focal point before they exert massive effort to create the perfect come over. Yeah. So lavished with so if if you if somebody lavishes you with something like usually clothing or jewelry or something like that, it means you, you get a lot of it. So they have been given a lot of Oscar nod. So a nod is like a nod is you usually nod with your head, like move your head up and down to say yes. Mm -hmm. But in this case it's like um, if you get an Oscar nod, it means the nomination. So they're recognizing you. Your your peers in the acting world are recognizing you as doing a good job. So they got lots of those. And this art, um, author of this article is saying that he does think that Christian Bell and Amy Adams, the two uh, main people, these two right here on the left in the middle there, uh, they do deserve the Oscars or the, the, the nods. Deserve means that they, they worked for it, they did a good job, so they should get <coughs> that. Um, because they blew everybody away. So their time, their um, characters, the way that they were acting together, they just did a really good job. So to blow people away, um, that just means they, they did better than everybody else. You can also, if, if you get blown away by something, it means like you, you were shocked or you were supply, surprised that they did such, maybe like a, such a good job. So from the start, he's saying that Bill convinces. So he's a convincing actor in this part. He does a really good job of convincing the audience that he really is this guy, this con artist, and so he really plays the part very well. And so Nihon and I are laughing because in the, the first scene, you see him with his um, distended belly, so his belly's uh, sticking out, you know, it's kind of a big belly and it's kind of sticking out mm -hmm. there, <laughs> and it's people are looking at it, it's a focal point. A focal point is something that you pay attention to, you focus on and so it's where your your eyes are looking at that and then he starts doing this massive effort so he spends a lot of time um, trying to fix his hair <laughs> so it's it's to exert massive effort means to do something um, to take a lot of time to do it so you see this scene I don't know first five ten minutes or something where there's music playing and stuff but he's 
working with his hair, trying to comb it over, putting glue on it, patting it down, you know, <laughs> trying to get it really nice. So it's kind of a funny thing. Equally, Adam, so Amy Adams, impresses with a character that's lost and desperate to get out of the con world, but who appears to be even more lost the deeper in she gets and more determined. Okay, Graciela. Equal and Adams. Adams. Impressed with yep. Adams. Mm-hmm. Equal Adams. Impressed with a, a character that's lot lost and this desperate to get out of the world, but who appears to be even more lost that deep in she gets and more determined. Determined. Yeah. Determined. Right. So this author of the article also agrees that Amy Adams, so <coughs> that character right there, uh, she also is impressive or she does impress. So the verb is to impress. It means you kind of show off and you, people think, wow, you're really doing a good job. They are impressed with you. And so her, um, she does a good job with her character, um, playing. You know, playing. It's very convincing. So the audience believe it's believable, and she gets deeper and deeper into this world that she wants to leave. But as she, she as she uh, becomes, you know, more involved in this crazy story, you also can see that she's very determined. She's not going to give up. If you're determined, you're just going to stick with it and and do it. So that's what her character was like. Uh, both Jennifer Lawrence as Irving's young wife and who behaves like a brat and brings some very funny moments and Bradley Cooper don't come close to matching the others. Cooper in particular seems to be OTT, which means over the top, and even Jeremy Renner puts them to shame with a quietly dignified turn as someone who's trying to do the best for his people Underneath a massively coiffed do. <laughs> All right, there's a lot of things in there. Okay, Mukhanat? Or, uh, yeah, go to Mukhanat. Your microphone's muted, Mukhanat. There you go. Me. Yeah. Starting both, with Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. Both Jennifer Lawrence as Irving Young wife and who behaves like a brat and brings some very funny moments and Bradley Cooper don't come close to matching the others. Cooper in particular seem to be OTT and even Jeremy Renner, Renner mm -hmm. put them to shame with a quietly dignified turn as a someone who is trying to do the best for his people underneath a massively coiffed do. Coiffed do. do. Yeah. Coiffed <laughs> do. Yeah. So Jennifer Lawrence, let me find a picture of her. This is her. She plays, a, a you know, she's very young in real life anyways, but... um. She plays Irving's wife, and she does a really good job of playing kind of like this sassy. You can see she's kind of she has a very um, New Jersey accent, and the way she's playing the part is very funny. And um, so, and this guy over here on the left, that's the the mayor, Jeremy Renner. And so, the coiffed do is this hairstyle that he has. <laughs> the hairstyle is really funny. It's um, Coiffed means uh, like uh, when you get a hairstyle, so it's it's combed a certain way. So it's kind of a fancy. Uh, trying to see if you can see it better in some of these pictures. Just a, a way to to he has his hair it goes up really tall. <laughs> so it's kind of a funny kind of uh, haircut or a hairdo. That's why it's called a do. It's called a hairdo. Um, that was popular in that time period in the 70s with guys. So it's it's. It's funny as an American, you look back and you're like, "That is a silly haircut," you know. So, so do you use do you use hairdo just for 
for both for men and women? Uh, you can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, hairdo. Yep, that's right. Thank yeah. You. So it's kind of a funny, funny do is for short, or hairdo is you know the longer term that we use. So um, that's his hairdo, and coiffed means just like combed. You know, it's it's kind of um, uh, when you spend time fixing up your hair, that's what it means to be coiffed. When you actually comb it a lot, you put hairspray on it, that kind okay. of stuff. Yeah. So Irving, she plays uh, this young wife who's kind of a brat. So usually a brat, we say like maybe a kid, oh, uh, you know, a kid who complains a lot, throws a lot of tantrums. That would be a brat. But in terms of this woman character, she kind of, she whines and she, you know, doesn't, she's not very nice all the time. She's kind of a babyish kind of character. Like, um, a spoil, like a spoiled boy? Yeah, spoiled brat is what we call uh, that term. So when you're you're just not a very nice person and you're not really thinking about other people, you're kind of just into yourself, you know. So she's kind of, we can say she's bratty, you know. Bratty. Yeah. Okay. Bratty is another word, and but so this guy thinks that even though they did you know a good job, they didn't come close to matching the others. So the other two, Amy Adams and, and Christian Bale, to come close to matching means, you know, if they would have been similar, but they weren't even anywhere near as good as the other two. So um, that's <clears throat> his opinion. Okay. And yeah, uh -huh. I disagree with that. <laughs> Completely <Right>. disagree. <laughs> yeah, I thought Jennifer Lawrence did a funny they were yes, both good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So everybody has their own opinions. This particular person thinks that it was kind of over the top um, and even Jeremy Renner, who the guy who with the the hairdo puts them to shame. So he did an even better job. If you put somebody to shame it's a way to say like um, they did bet, you know, like Jeremy did better than those other guys. So he put them to shame because he did so much better. Um, and his character, he says, was quietly dignified. So dignified means he actually played a nice kind of character who was in integrity because the character, really what he was trying to do, even though he was willing to do it in kind of illegal ways, he was trying to do what was best for like his people, so in the town. Um, so it's kind of you know you kind of think like maybe he's not such a bad guy even if he did bad uh, or illegal things. All right, so overuse of voiceovers initially leads to a feeling of dizziness, and along with swooping, swirling cameras, American Hustle starts to feel like a scam on the audience, aimed at disorienting and confusing as the story unfolds. It's almost as if Russell is pulling the strings and will stop at nothing to stop you keeping up. Okay, uh, Nihan. Our use of voiceovers initially leads to a feeling of dizziness and along with swooping, swirling cameras, American Hustle starts to feel like a scam on the audience aimed at a disorienting and confusing as the story unfolds. It's almost as if Russell is pulling the strings and will stop at nothing to stop you keeping up. Mm -hmm. So overuse of something means they, they, did, they used it too much. So you overdid it, we could say. Um, so the voiceovers are like when people are talking and so instead of the, having the characters actually um, saying stuff, it's like when you're seeing things and then they're narrating it. So, you know, we did this and this happened. So those are the voiceovers. But he's saying as an audience um, person, he was feeling kind of dizzy, you know, getting like, whoa, what's happening here? And he's talking about especially the way the camera shots were made. So swooping and swirling, it means like going down with the camera and then coming up and kind of moving around a lot. So that um, technique, he's saying, was kind of made you feel like uh, you didn't understand what was going on. You were, um, you were, you were being scammed, you could say, or, or the director was scamming the audience, tricking, tricking the audience because he was um, making the audience feel disoriented, you know, like they didn't know what was going on and confused as the story unfolds. Unfolds means as it, as it continues to be told. So a story unfolds a little bit at a time. You find out a little bit more and then a little bit more as the time goes on. 
And so he says it's almost as if Russell, that's the name of the director, is pulling the strings. So pulling the strings is like with a puppet. You know how you pull the strings up and down to make the puppet move? But um, this is like pulling the strings of the audience members. So he's, he's like manipulating the audience because you, he is making you confused. And so he says um, he thinks he will stop at nothing. So he was very determined to confuse the audience so to make it difficult to keep up with him in the movie, like what's happening. Did you think it was hard to keep up with, Nihon? Yeah, um, at the last 15 minutes, mm -hmm. um, actually uh, I was a little bit confused, mm -hmm. but I understood it finally. In the end, yeah. 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 Yeah, you definitely feel like, whoa, what's going on? And yes, yes. Yeah, you, and you think something's happening, and then you're like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we won't give it away, though. Yeah. In fact, American Hustle is really a case of a simple story being put upon layer upon layer. At its heart, it's about the pursuit of the American dream. And dressed up with some of the worst wigs and cleavage you've ever seen. <laughs> All right. Carlos, from in Amer in fact. Okay, in fact, American Hustle is really a case of a simple story being put upon layer upon layer, and it's her. It's about the pursuit of the American dream, and dress it up with some of the worst wig and cleavage you are you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. So he says it's it's really a case of. So a case of means like this is what it really is. A case of, so you have a simple story, but there's like a simple story and then there's a layer of it and then there's another layer of it and another layer. So it's just like these simple things that keep happening which make you confused. Mm -hmm. But But really at the heart, so at the heart of it, like the main <laughs> idea, was that you're showing these characters who are really just trying to have a better life. So pursuit of the American dream. So in this, this case, they are just going after what we call the American dream, which is like make your own livelihood, be able to make money, be wealthy, maybe live a good life, have fun, that kind of stuff. And so they were just trying to, to do that. And in this author's opinion, <laughs> he said it's some of the worst wigs and cleavage you've ever seen, um, which I don't know if that takes away from the movie because that's what they were trying to to portray. So, again, with his no, hair. Adam's, he, her cleavage it was really nice. <laughs> Not Lawrence. All so, skins. Yeah. So... Cleavage is how much you can see a woman's breasts, basically. That's <laughs> what the cleavage is. And before we watched the movie at my um, movie theater here, they said um, that they always tell a little bit about the characters and stuff like that. Apparently, um, Amy Adams in this movie never wore a bra. Yeah. And, and this is the cleavage. Like, you can see, basically, her breasts. And so she said you just had to forget about what your, your boobs were doing. <laughs> so she couldn't think <laughs> about it. So every, everything was just barely covering up um, that character right there, Amy, Amy Adams. So she, that's what the guy's talking about. Cleavage is the word that when you can see a woman's breasts. Okay, The wigs are the hair, what you put on for your hair. A vein of humor runs throughout this garish vision of the 70s with its mafia overtones. Thanks to Louis C.K., C.K.'s police boss, who's trying to spin a story to Richie, the FBI agent. Okay, Graciela. Mm -hmm. Then of humor runs together this garish vision of the 70s with its mafia of stone, thanks to Lois Sikis false boss who tried to spin and story to reach FBI agent. agent. Mm -hmm. Good. 
a vein of humor runs throughout. So a vein is like in your body. We have the veins, the blood, you know, goes. So in this, in this case, it's like a small amount of humor kind of is running throughout, pumping through this movie, we could say. So it's, it's funny. You know, they're funny, definitely funny scenes, funny things. Um, garish just kind of means that's the idea of it's over the top. So the music, the costumes, everything was just very bright and very kind of like over the top showing you this, um, this story. Um, it also had mafia overtones. So when it has overtones, it means just a little bit of the mafia was in there. Uh, it seemed like a mafia type movie. In fact, uh, Robert De Niro, I think. Is that Robert De Niro? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, he, he was in the movie as a mafia guy, and so you have the mafia in the movie, and, you know, that whole kind of tone of that style, those business guys, the way they talk, the way they act, you know, it's kind of scary, you know, they might just kill you, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing was in the movie. And then Louis C.K., I thought he did a really good job. He is a funny guy. He's an American uh, comedian that maybe you guys, if you ever want to... Uh, Listen to some stand-up comedy. You can find a lot of stuff on his uh, website. It's it, he cusses a lot, <laughs> but he's very funny. So try try looking him up on YouTube or something. Anyway, he um, to spin a story. To spin a story means to create like a story, to fabricate, to make it up. You know, they're trying to. Uh, um, that's usually what the newspapers do to put a spin on something so you have the story the real story and then you change things to put a spin on it so it's never really actually um, a hundred percent true that's why it said like some of these things actually happened so a lot of it wasn't true and some of it was all in all American hustle is all about the spin ultimately shallow and blessed with some great performances it's an intriguing choice for such awards success because whilst it's still a solidly showy film it's not a totally superbly engrossing one with costumes scenery and era re recreation or recreation taking center stage the con is perhaps on <laughs> okay this is a big paragraph with lots of stuff in it so uh, Mukhanad you want to read that or more sorry more how about you Oh yeah, let me try. Okay. Okay. Sure. So all we know, American house stories of all about this pin, ultimately shallow and blessed with some great performances. It's an intriguing, intriguing uh, intriguing. choice for. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is intriguing yes. choice for such hours success, because where is it still our solidly, solid, solidly, show show we feel. It's not a totally superbly engrossing one with costumes, scenery, and era recreation taking central stage. The con, the con is perhaps on. Mm -hmm. So all in all just means like, okay, in the end, basically, to sum, it, to sum something up, all in all, um, American Hustle, the movie, is all about the spin. So the spin, like I just said, is like how do you change the story. What do you tell? What do you not tell? How do you maybe give a different um, version of it so that it's confusing and maybe more interesting but not necessarily true. <laughs> so ultimately just means like finally in the end in the final analysis this person thinks it's kind of shallow so it's not a really meaningful film. It doesn't have a lot of depth to it um, but it does have a lot of great performances. So it was a blessing to have those actors being able to do such a good job with the characters. And so it's an intriguing or interesting or compelling something makes you think like, oh, that's kind of interesting that they chose this this type of movie um, to be awarded. And um, in whilst we don't really say whilst, we would just say because while, but in Britain and New Zealand, Australia, they use whilst just means while. So while it's still, so even though it's still a sh solidly showy film, um, showy means, you can imagine with these uh, pictures, it's showy, showing off a lot of things. <laughs> you know, the costumes, the hairdos, the money, the, these kinds of things. It was a showy film. It was not a very um, 
like boring looking. So there's lots of interesting costumes, jewelry. You can tell there's money involved, that kind of stuff. His opinion is it's not totally a superbly engrossing one. So it's, you don't really find yourself going, oh my God, what's happening next? You know, an engrossing movie is one where you really got to find out what's going to happen next. It's like more suspenseful. So he's just saying like it was a fun movie. It had some good actors, the costumes, the scenery, uh, recreating the time period. So the 70s, you know, was good. But it wasn't like a super meaningful movie. Maybe you're not going to remember it a year from now. So that's why he ends his article with maybe the con is on. So maybe we're being conned to think it's better than it was, is what he means. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay, uh, Carlos and Moore, did you guys see this movie yet? Carlos or Moore? Nihon and I are the only ones who have seen it, but no, Graciela is going to see it. No, I haven't seen it. No, you haven't no. seen it? Yeah. No. It's fun. It's a good, you know, yeah. fun way to spend a couple hours. But Nihon, you agree with the author in the end? Yeah. At in the end. Yeah. Only in the end. Yeah. Yeah. In the end. But Not it's for performance because I don't think so. The main performance, main characters, mm -hmm. could get a uh, Oscar. I'm pretty sure because their rise is really tough. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. The Oscars are coming up in February. I wanted to show this is actually March. March? I thought it was February 24th. Second mm -hmm. March? Really? I think. Oh, I thought it was uh, February 24th. Chris, probably make men will be good. Yeah. Uh, okay, I will, I'll look it up. To the first to, the first to move Chris Barley make, uh, inferior to the son. Yeah. I think he very young, maybe eleven years old. Yeah. Uh, he or um, he very good actor. Yeah, this other movie here that he was in by the same um, the same director, I thought was a good movie too, The Fighter, and that was based on a a true story. And he he also looked pretty uh, like he lost a lot of weight for that one yes. or something. So um, yeah. So he seems to be pretty into his um, characters. You know, he does a lot. I'm not familiar with these ones, but I guess he was in the um, the Batman movies. Yeah. Yeah. American Psycho. Uh, but yeah. yeah, American Psycho <clears throat> is one of his famous. Movies, I think. I uh, yeah, the the prestige uh, in the uh, last decade, maybe. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. It was, these ones right here. You can look them up and see which one. He's done a lot of movies. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think he's a serial of Terminator too, no? Yeah, I think that's what it said too. Yeah. Yeah, what? I love this, uh, this serial. Terminator 2 Terminator. Yes, Terminator. I have yeah. seen. Terminator Salvation. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, well, we used up all of our time reading and talking a little bit about it. We didn't get to discuss it, but hopefully if you guys are interested, you can check out the trailer on YouTube, and maybe you'll be able to find it on the Internet or on the <laughs> uh, in the movie theaters somewhat time. Um, and we'll see if they, if, they, if they end up winning anything. Um, I have a class that I need to start now, so my next hour is the 20 questions game, which is fun for practicing, Yay. asking questions, and seeing if we can guess things. <laughs> so if you want to join me, then we'll, I'm going to close this class and open the other one in just a minute. Thank uh, you. Uh, All right. Okay, bye thanks for Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.